Hey, today we're going to be podding with Artie Whiting, uh, the head honcho of the Back of the Bus. That's an awesome local band. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that started, how it got formed, a little bit of controversy around the name of the band, and some old music that uh, he would rather his kids not listen to. And also we're going to talk a little bit about culture and what's really solid for young folks to keep in mind as they uh, progress in life. Let's get casting. Let's let's start talking about that. I'm here with Artie Whiting. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all right. Let's get casting. I'm here with Artie Whiting. Uh, Artie and I met at ASU. Now it seemed when we met way back when that I should have known you my whole life. It uh, had that feel to it. Did, it, it, yeah, did yeah. the magic feel that way for you too? Yeah, we were kindred yeah. spirits. It seemed that way. Yeah. We're there in the Spanish department, forcing around. You introduced me to everybody that you know you knew, which was a lot more people than me, because Mesa High dudes don't go to college, <laughs> but Mountain View dudes did, and so <laughs> I had kind of an in because you kind of took me under your wing. Go Toros. Yeah, and before well, we beat anyway. Yeah, before Toros, I have to give a shout out. I have to give a shout out to Westwood because I did spend most of my high school days at Westwood High School. Oh, so you cleaned it up at the end. Yeah, yeah, a good finish. My family moved, and I was forced to go there, but I was not sad about it. Right. So made some new friends. Gotcha. And we hung out as the devils together, and pretty much the whole entire college. My whole entire college career was you were there. Lots of classes together. Yeah. Lots of laughs. Yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely made that place fun. <laughs> and, and that's the funny thing is back then, it was, remember back when ASU was the party school, right? Oh, my gosh. I got tons of stories. I got to tell you this one. That's it. So this is probably, uh, it was probably the same year we were in Spain. I might have told you this already because it was probably the biggest, you know, thing for me at the time. Unmarried, right? Yep. Okay. You're, so, you're a single fella. Yeah, yeah single fella. And I walk into disclaimers out there. Yeah, disclaimer. <clears throat> Single fella. I walk into this uh, this biology class. It's a lab, and I am surrounded by probably six sorority girls, and just me. I'm the only dude there. Some other skater kid walks in, and he sits down. But the first day, professor says, "Okay." You guys are going to divide into two teams and uh, give me a team name. And I'm sitting there with six sorority girls at my table, and they say, what's your name? And I said, I'm Artie. And they said, we're Artie's angels. Oh, man, they had it dialed they in. They had it dialed in. I was going to start playing the violin. <laughs> man, no. Artie's angels I live was, again. I was Artie's, yeah. I was, mm. So for that semester, I, I, didn't, you had I did not miss a lab. Right. Just say that. Right. Yeah. It was easy to attend. It was very easy to attend. You know, it's interesting. We get these guys that are, as we, we're getting older, it just so happens. Mm, and does. we see these um, younger generational fellows growing up. I mean, hell, we're raising half of them. <laughs> uh, how many kids you got? I've got four kids. Yeah. Two so, boys, I mean, you're, two girls. All right. How old's the oldest? The oldest is 22. And I've got a 21-year-old. And two girls in high school. One's a senior. One's a sophomore. The girls, huh? Oh yeah. They're Do fun. they have mom's looks? Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> now you gotta be all nervous <laughs> all the time. Yeah. But then they'll get married someday, maybe, right? Oh, well, that's true. Yes. They're, they're gonna they're gonna be lookers. Your lady's a pretty lady. Yeah, she is. She's a pretty she one. Is. I'm a lucky man. Yes, you are. You out punted your coverage, man. <laughs> <laughs> you did. So we have. So which one does this burgie hang out with? So Reese is a friend of my 21 year old son Miles. Okay. So Miles keeps him in check. No. That's the other way around. It's, it's definitely the other way around. That is not good. So nobody's in check then. Nobody. Really, nobody's in check. Those guys. If you could just see them, uh, we could just have them in here talking. And I can't wait till we do that because it, <laughs> I think we need to do that because it's funny the way they look at the world. Okay, I'm, I'm this, I'm this, and I'm that. And you're like, all these guys together are hilarious. Oh, that'd be great. Let's I do it. it. 
Let's do it. We get we can white out the hey guys, can we white out this thing and make it to where we get a bunch of folks Reese's age in here and we can kind of get their stories and how things are rolling. Yeah. That's what we need to do. I think it'd be great. As long as he doesn't lose the Mortimer mustache, <laughs> we're gonna be good. Reese needs to get on camera here so everybody can see him. Oh yeah, and that tan. Oh, I know. Where has he been? I don't know. Where were you? California? San Clemente. I was just there. Were you? Yeah, you know, it's what do you do in San Clemente? Okay, I wasn't in San Clemente. I was in uh, Mission Bay. Okay, but just in California. Same thing. I just got back yesterday, and I don't look like that. Number one. Hey, but you look good, bro. All right, I haven't you. seen you in a while, and I'm like, hey, I, I should have worn a tie today, but oh heck, I no, you're looking fly the way. We're gonna get into the Artie story because yeah. Artie was—he's always been kind of my he hero. Easy. Uh, kind of. I mean, A, I started driving bus because of you, even though I don't remember you driving bus. I never bus. drove bus. <laughs> but you introduced me to Russ Jones. Okay. Who did, who did. and then okay. Farnsworth, yeah. and then yeah. all those other fellas. Yeah. And I was like, I, you know, I became one of the Toros. I know. That's true. You know, I just had to, tight, I had to tuck in my bunny, uh, <laughs> my, my bunny colors, and just started hanging with the Toros. I, I, had, no, I had no other options. And so if I was going to have Artie's Angels, I got what came with it. So uh, what happens here is, so I start driving bus, and, 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 and you're always just kind of in the frame. And then one of our buddies says, dude, are you going to Artie's show? I'm like, what? What do you mean Artie's show? And then I go, yeah, dude has, a, dude has a band. And I'm like, Artie's got a band? All right, I go, yeah, I'll, I'll go to his show. Uh, Artie doesn't have a band. Artie is the show and <laughs> is a freaking man child. I mean, he's awesome. And it was like, Artie's Angels, that's what you should have named your dad gum band. I mean, back of the bus is pretty rad. <laughs> but then again, nowadays, having the name of that band tends to give you a little bit of an uh, eyebrow raise, if you yeah, will. In I'm with fact, you. Uh, my daughter was standing in line once with a back of the bus t shirt and. A young lady that was standing behind her said, "What is that supposed to mean?" Oh snap! So you know you get that, and back then it wasn't. You yeah. know we were just we, our emblem, like our our logo was a school bus, right? So you know what I mean? Right. It was like all the kids in the back of the school bus, right. or the like rowdy ones, right? all we we usually tried to gravitate to the back yeah, of the bus. Yeah. Well, anyway, so but we didn't. You know, teenage minds don't think ahead and don't. Think about any type of negative connotation. Well, if you were ever going to change the name of the band, which I don't recommend, because I love Back of the it Bus. Should be Artie's Angels. Artie's Angels, it is. You should probably do that. I anyway. don't know. If I like Back of the Bus. <laughs> and you guys just recently had, you just recently cut one and put it out there as a single. Couple. Okay, so what are your most recent? So we can throw them up on our on our channel. So um, we had written a couple songs. <laughs> One of them is kind of funny. We used to have, a, and you might know, this guy was a Mesa High dude. One of the low moves, you know. The oh, yeah. Moves. yeah. Bill so or Scott? Scott was my All roommate. Right. And Scott and Bill have a cousin named named Eddie. Eddie used to Every come. Tongan has a cousin oh, named Eddie. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eddie, and they all had flight benefits because we all work for the airlines. And yeah. so Eddie would fly into town and... As soon as you, he would leave, we would be missing stuff all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so freaking Eddie. And, and so then, if you remember, bless his soul, Jared Hunt from yeah. Mesa High as well, he, he had a nickname for everybody. And, and Eddie, he just started using Eddie as an example of, like, if you borrow something, hey, let me Eddie that from you or, or let which me, means let me let me I'm take gonna, let me yeah. eddie your drink your, you know yeah. so you take a drink of somebody's you know let me take something right so that became dude stop eddie in my stuff okay right anyway so you so, wrote a song about eddie so we wrote a song about eddie you have to have a song yeah. about eddie and so it uh it was eddie's last chance so we uh we wrote a song about eddie he was always living like it was his last chance because he knew that we would whip him if he if we found our hat, our favorite hat or shoes or, or whatever, whatever he, he took missing. from our closet. He'd he'd rummage through everything and end up we'd see photos of him later on and and see oh hey there's my pants right yeah you know? there they went yeah so we wrote that that's Eddie's last chance we came out with that one and so we just you know when you're you when you're young and 
college students, you don't have a lot of money, as you can relate. Mm-hmm. But um, And so you don't have money to record. We right. recorded one album, but it was one of those albums where you go in for one day and you lay down all the tracks, which is unheard. We did 10 songs. That poor sound engineer, I felt bad for him because he was there all day with these little high school and college kids and trying to put down an, something that sounded decent. It actually sounds pretty good. It, you guys are awesome. <clears throat> and, it, and especially if somebody's that good live, you know, the recordings are typically really good. Yeah. But you were awesome. So I was like, why did you guys not tell me that freaking Artie? There's a reason why he's got angels. <laughs> I mean, our, I was shocked because, you know, in my mind, obviously we're uh, creatures of kind of the 80s, 90s. Uh-huh. And so my mind, Rockstar didn't, look like back of the bus yeah um you guys were kind of ahead of your time yeah. in in my opinion a little bit because there were bands that just kind of came after like in the mid to late 90s that they just came as they were you know they didn't have to have the requisite face tattoo and all the piercings and the big long hair and the and or or the or the buttless chaps that Dave, david lee roth <laughs> you know could pull off I mean, the dude is very limber and Are you flexible. saying I couldn't pull that I off? I don't know. I, could you touch your toes like he does, no, though? Not really. I mean, that was pretty remarkably <laughs> athletic. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't put anything after seeing you, though, past you. Because, I mean, you're you're good. We yeah. had fun, man. Those were good days. We played, <laughs> we played for all of the, if you can name a, a venue that was in the Tempe ASU area, we probably played there. Right. And... The funnest places were the Gibsons. If you remember Gibsons, yep. Hayden Square area, that was always a great show. That might have been where I saw you. We um, we opened. So that's up a bigger. For, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it was. And then I remember we played. I remember Cinco de Mayo, the refreshments. Roger Klein, he used to do this Cinco de Mayo thing at, at Hayden Square, and we would we actually got asked to play after that gig. And I remember that night was, I think it might have been their last show together. And then we, and then everyone filed into Gibson's and they had us play. Nice. And then, um, but we were, we had maybe 12 songs that we could play. And one of them was a cover of The Refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So at the end of the night, I think <laughs> we had to play that because we ran out of songs. I remember the sound guy there at Gibson's comes like, you guys can't stop yet. Everyone's still here. You guys can't stop. Play again. Like, okay, we'll just repeat what we like, just okay. did. No, I think we like broke out a violent femmes tune and like. Oh, why not? Some Foo yeah, Fighters. Yeah. They weren't around yet. No. They no, weren't around really yet. Either. I forgot. Strike that from the record. <laughs> Some Stone Temple Pilots, maybe. Yeah. No, we hit like a Steve Miller band. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Those yeah. were good days, man. We played for a sorority party, Artie's Angels. I remember now. They asked me. They found out about my band, and they asked me to play for their sorority did, party. Did you say yeah. for, a, for a fee or? <laughs> uh, okay, this, yeah, yeah, this is quasi family no. friendly, but you know what? This I'll you just, piqued my interest here now. I just remember driving forever to North Scottsdale to some home, and and there were buses park down front so they invited another like three or four fraternity fraternities oh. and so they all travel there on a bus because they're probably going to get drunk right. and, and stay you know and um yeah they were drunk yeah and so I it didn't matter it didn't matter what you played yeah, it didn't matter it didn't yeah. really matter it's just like good night <laughs> christy are you doing okay <laughs> It was crazy. I remember looking down. They had like this Olympic sized swimming pool at the bottom, and we're up there just going, you know, we're a bunch of LDS guys. And they're going, oh my gosh, what are we? Mama looking at told right? me not to come. <laughs> hey guys, on B, we're gonna do this in a low C. <laughs> Watch me for the changes. Yeah. Watch me for the changes. Yeah, Marty McFly style. Exactly. So uh, it turned out fun. We had a good time, man. Awesome. Those were good days. And then my wife came to a show before she was my wife. Right, okay. Met her through my brother at. Uh, Ooh, country, which brother? Chad. All right, like myself country and club? Chad. Yeah, of course you do. And but, uh, no, come on now. Yeah, Brandon's yeah. kind of okay. my. He's the sleeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad Chad left. <laughs> he's back. And, in, he's and back I know in he's AZ. back now. 
Yeah. But I'm glad when he left, I was like, at least it wasn't gave, Brandon. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. You know what I mean? Because they live right down the street from me, and I'm like, I, I can't do it without Brandon, <laughs> even though I'm only going to run into him once every two years at bashes. <laughs> I, I I need that. You do. I do. I need myself some Brandon. Yeah. Chad, though, I don't know, because I either want to run to him or away <laughs> from him. I'm conflicted with Chad because. I don't know. You got some cool brothers. That's all I, I have do. to say. I have a great family. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. But um, so Chad was working in the dental field and doing his internship. Mesa, dentist. Oh, old um, school throwback. Long rock. Yeah. And Amber, my wife now, was uh, working there. And he tells me, you know, hey, there's a girl that I think you might need to meet. So I met her at a some bowling night he told me she was going to be a bowling country club bowl right remember country so you club just bowl. showed up at I, I just showed up at country club bowl he gave me a description of her and i saw her and she turned around after she bowled a gutter ball okay right and turns around like fast like she's upset she just bowled a bowl gutter, but then yeah. i saw her and i'm like you know it's yeah, like the lights all huh uh, the angels. In your arms oh. You know, that's ooh. Ooh, it was just like, must ooh. have been something. Yeah, yeah. So it was so there. was a moment saw, right oh, there. There was a moment. There was a moment. For you, anyway. For me. I don't know about her. I don't know. In she fact, she told me she, because uh, I went up to talk to her. She goes, You're Chad's brother. Because, you know, yeah, there's kind of like all you hogos look alike. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. there's a resemblance. And, um, and I told her, I said, This is what my first thing I said to her. So what's your story? It seems like a normal thing I, to say, right? right? Right. And she didn't like that? She hated that. Oh, she's like, snap. Um, I think maybe I put her on the spot or something. Uh, she didn't like to be put on the spot. Okay, I could see that. But where I was going with that but was... It didn't met, work out too badly, work, though. No, we talked on the phone, and that worked better for the first time. She kept you on the phone. <laughs> and then I told her <laughs> about it. This back when you <laughs> count <laughs> minutes on yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. like, uh... I gotta go. My sprint cell brick that was like right. this tall is crazy. Bro. Right. I gotta go. We've been gotta, on for yeah, 14 yeah. minutes. Oof. Yeah. Um, but where I was going with that was that kind of opened up the chance for me to tell her that our band was playing. And at that particular show, it was a big show, probably one of our biggest shows. It was at the Cajun House in Scottsdale. Okay. Yep. And it was a battle of the bands and there were like four other bands, high yeah, school four guys banger. or college guys. You had four there, banger there at that one, I think. There's a bunch of them, and there's like, <clears throat> so Back the basically bus, whoever right. you, whoever had the most people there would win. Right. And so, so you all were these recruiting. bands are trying to get people there. There was probably a thousand people inside I didn't know that, that part of and that was the first time she saw me on stage, and she told. I remember looking down at her, and she's just like, eyes wide open, going, "Oh, whoa." You know, and she became kind of your first deal. and last groupie. Yeah. Well, you know, she said something that kind of I think I won her over with was I I played this red guitar. Yeah. It's a it's a Strat. Okay. And I was playing it, and the way that the lights were shining on it, she thought that it lit up. She thought it was like a like mm. electronics, like I, lights around it were flashing on it, and mm. so she thought that was the coolest thing that she'd ever seen. I'm like, hey, by the way. My light, my guitar doesn't light up. She's like, yeah, it does. I know it does because I saw it. And I'm like, yeah, well, okay. I'm gonna I'll take that. I'm gonna take I'll that take as a win. Hey, it's a win. And she said yes, so you're she gonna did. go from there. Yeah. You got four kids. Yeah. Um, I'm a lucky guy. I really am. She's a good woman. So I started thinking, okay, because I do this podcast thing, and I love to bring in culture. I love to bring it. Cook. All right. So everybody knows this is sponsored by the Arizona firm, and the Arizona firm does. Criminal defense, they do family law, so divorces, modifications, things like that. Criminal defense, all sorts of not very fun things that we get to see. And then car accidents. So happy campers, but these folks really need help, right? Yeah. And I found that we are given, exa we're, we're giving, we're, we're helpmates in tragedy. We're like, kind of like that, somebody's reaching for a, um, you know, a, of a rescue um, type scenario. They, they just find themselves really deep uh, into an addiction, into um, a, a discouraging, a depression, uh, really deep into these things. And so I started looking for 
all the positives that are all around us. Because encouraging somebody to just go down to the, encouraging somebody to go down to the, um, to the Goodwill to get a button up and a pair of pants and that match and just ask the people at the Goodwill to help you. And they will. And they come back feeling, okay, first off, I'm noticing they must never have had a button up on before, ever. And they're feeling like they can land whatever job they're trying to get. They, they feel like they can start moving forward. Yeah. So I start looking around. I'm like, Wait, why am I looking around? Artie has his brother's a dentist. His other brother works with him at SRP. He's a musician. He's got four kids that are well-adjusted. He still laughs. He still smiles. He's still rolling. He still plays. So you roll in a way that I we are trying to help folks um, do what you do naturally, which is I mean, it's not everybody's picking up that strat that glows or doesn't. Debatable. <laughs> right. But not everybody's <clears throat> just grabbing that up in their garage no. and, and, and kicking it. But everybody needs to have an outlet. I agree. Everybody needs to have something. And if you can't find that something, you need to explore a little bit more. Yeah, I agree I with you. you. Find it. And Give us an example of something else. Because I, I, I want to play the <laughs> harmonica, and the last musician I had in here um, discouraged me significantly as to the harmonica. <laughs> saying, no, uh, no, 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 no. Maybe they just don't like the harmonica, or they were saying it's way harder than you think. A harmonica, I think, is good at a campfire. For a little while. What about these musicians? For a little okay, while. Okay, I'm going to bring up tambourine. What do you think no. about that? Oh, okay. Only in a band that, like, let's, like, Oak Ridge Jim, Boys. Jim Blossoms. They, they play tambourine. I mean, that was my first concert, by the I way. Like Jim Blossoms. Jim Blossoms was my first concert, ninth grade, Club Rio. Oh, we, been, I'm, hey, I'm guilty of being there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there <laughs> once with a buddy of ours that we have in common. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, not that, not that Club Rio. I'm talking about when Club Rio used to have the concerts inside. And oh, okay. <clears throat> Do you know they used to have lunch there? I did not know that. Was that any it was good? insane. Burgers. You can yeah. get a burger and fries and a drink for five bucks at oh. Club Rio, and they set up tables on the dance floor. You know where the dance? Yeah, floor. where the right, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this is. Would have been good to know then. Yeah, I know. I would have. Artie, you could. I, they tore it down. You were too busy focusing on your angels, <laughs> and not telling me about the, not telling me about the. I good can't lunch believe I wouldn't have told you that because that was like right when we were at ASU. But I think we went to the Chuck. What was we that? went to Chuck? Chuck Box. Open Chuck Box. And and um, the Chick Fil A that they had inside. They did have one of those inside. And but no, everybody. But I could hardly ever afford that one. Chick Fil A yeah. of all of them, that was like, that seemed like and it still is. Pricey. It still feel like I need to go to. We Roos can Chris go down this Chick Fil A a little bit if you want, because we, if you remember it, like Superstition Springs Mall. Yep, that was the first time I was introduced to Chick Fil A. I was probably maybe ten, twelve. Okay, and you know what you do back then, and you right. go to Aladdin's Castle right, right there, and and it was like on the way, and so you'd s- stop and you'd see the lady out there with, with the their little toothpicks, yep. and you'd grab and you're one. Hooked. And you're hooked, and there's no way you're not going to try and get, get more. To give you more, and right? So they're just trying to get rid of them anyway, and so they're just like, okay. But after about the fourth or fifth time, then they then, then they, 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 they kind of put. They know who stop. their regulars yeah, are. Yeah. <laughs> they know who they are. So, but that changed my life. Chick Fil A. That's a. Oh. Hey, uh, hey now, you know, I know what? we're not sponsored by them, but um, well, we could be. I mean, you never know. I mean, yeah. you know, Chick Fil A. They are a Christian outlet. Well, what about these guys? I don't know. We might get you them all, someday. You know, as as I have known Dana Hogel for probably 30 years. He's never not had one of these in his hand, I don't think. Every so, But it's gone church, diet. wherever well, you go. It's, it's usually under the seat. I mean, <laughs> uh, usually. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. it was. I just love the fact that you're still home, and you're still jamming, and you're still SRPing, and you're up the ladder quite a bit. Well, it's been... I started when I was, gosh, 21 years old. Um, if kids are bored, get more than one job. Get a job, but then get another one. That's right. that's really kind of what I feel like propelled me to like kind of have this instinct to want to to work because I was working two jobs. 
And if ki- if you can convince your kids to go work for the airlines, you got it made. Right. Because you get the benefits too. Okay, I'm gonna work on that. Okay, I'm gonna work so on that. Yeah. Or we gotta at least have one of these two yeah. jack wagons get. I'm a telling job you, for working the airlines that was the best job after college for me because yeah, I can you go in everywhere. I was working there and I, and I was. Oh, this is funny though. I would work. At SRP, I got a job working in their call center in 99, and I started working there. So I would answer the phone, you know, hey, SRP, thanks for calling SRP, you know. And, and then I would go from there. I had an hour break to go start my shift at America West Airline. Okay. So I, then I would go to America West, and sometimes I'd get it mixed up. And I'd say, thanks for calling America West. Wait, I thought I called SRP. Oh, That's shoot. what yeah, I meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yep. yep. You're in the right spot, Bucky. Mm-hmm. All right. I was working two jobs, and it was uh, – those were good days. I mean, I, but yeah, I started in 99 and I'm still, still at SRP, man. It's, yeah. it's been, it'll be 25 years in February. And that, that's, and you, okay. So I'm walking and I don't remember where you may know, you may not know because you do perform at SRP functions. So I used to do that. So, so this has back been a minute. Day, it's been, it's been probably 10 years ago. That we stopped like that, that, but there was for a, for a while, for about ten years, in fact, we played. Um, our general manager at the time was a guy that um, was a drummer, and he hadn't played the drums in a long time, and he needed an outlet. So this yeah. is a good example to right. go into this because that's somebody that didn't have what they thought they didn't have time. I mean, they're on boards, they're on, you know, all of the. They don't hardly have any free time, and so what he did was he 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 just kind of did a feelers out in the company to see if anybody played music well that was the time when i was playing out in tempe all the time so word got to my supervisor that he was looking for someone to just put together a band for a one-time event <clears throat> just to have fun we would practice we would rehearse songs and then we'd be ready for this event it was a picnic that he would throw every year yeah and so that's where i think i heard your voice i like was walking i'm like <laughs> Who's that? Hey. <laughs> so we would, um, it was awesome because we had several people in the company that played music. And, and so. No and, tambourines and that, though. Well, we had a tambourine. Yeah. We did. Not so, for every so you song. Had to, not so you for had every to, song. So you used it for some of your gin blossom <clears throat> covers. Yeah, yeah, right. So that was something for him, I think, was a great avenue because <laughs> he would have all of us set up all the equipment and, you know, he didn't have the time. So he would right. just show up, beat get the on drums, the, beat the drums, and then we would clear everything off the stage and we'd clean up. But that was his outlet. Yeah, that was, was his outlet. He went looking for yeah. it. Yeah, and he found and something you, that he loved. And we took, uh, in fact, there was one year that we played 42 shows. No kidding. So That's if you think how many, how many weeks are in a year? 52. 52, and we played 42 shows. So I, that, those were the years where we had little kids. Yeah. And my wife kind of was like, okay. This is getting out of control. Do you have to keep doing this? Right. Do you have to keep doing this? But I, I liked it, too. It was kind of an outlet for me right. as well. Um, <clears throat> so I kept going for a long time and until it was just too much. And I was missing my boys' basketball games on the weekends, and it was hard. And so I, I had to go into so the general manager's from... office to say, hey, um, right. please don't fire me, but I need to – Take I need a step to be back at, from the man. I need to be at my basketball, yeah. you know, my kids' basketball yeah. games. And so, and they were cool with that. Yeah, he was supportive of that. Didn't fire me. I'm still there. Because you are, you were the band, as far as I uh, remember. I'm not saying yeah, that the was, rest of those guys good, weren't great. They had some good uh, talent that was up and coming too. That they were able to keep going for a while. So well, there you go. Made some really good friends during that though. So it's interesting. So then your passion became still passionate about it, but it became more of a hobby. Because you still do it. You still kick out a few. You're ripping on Eddie now. And <laughs> so that's just because we didn't have it recorded. Fun. So we just, I was going to say, we, we didn't have the money to do it when we were younger. And so now that we have real jobs, we can actually like pay to go into a studio and like do something right. And these two songs, we were kind of like, you know what? We never recorded these. Do you guys want to go back to the studio? And we didn't have a recording with our bass player that replaced our old bla- bass player that was on our old recordings, and he always wanted to have something with him on there. He's insane, incredible, Justin Brotman, another Mesa guy. Um, he went to Mountain View, and uh, <laughs> but uh, and then he went to Berkeley School of Music. Oh, so okay. So now he's like 
Dude, he's the School best, of Rock, the best bass player I've ever played with in my entire life. And he's he just so insane. happens to be your guy's. Yeah, he's insane. It's awesome. He's a, he's amazing. But yeah, so yeah, uh, family, music, find something. I I don't know. So I like. So I'm not talented. All of my taste is in my mouth, and I don't Ooh. have. I, I can't even play the tambourine. Everyone keeps saying. I I keep saying. Hey, maybe I could. I can't even be the toe tapper now. I can just spectate. That's it. I'm barely, I'm barely talented enough to do that. Yeah. So that said, um, I love that. I got your brothers in my neighborhood. They're not in bands. No, nope, their kids are insane. But they, they, they're, but they're very much part of their kids' lives, mm-hmm. and they're very good fathers. Yeah. You're a good dad. And they're all kind of beaten to their own drum. They all have their own things that they got going on. And so, I mean, I know that walking doesn't sound all that sexy to most people. I do it every night because that's great. You're going to see me every night in the dark, just wandering around. My, I'm that weird guy with the backpack with the water in it, listening to the D-backs last night. Hey, anyway. how about them hey, D-backs, though? I'll take it. I'll amazing. take it. Three and O's. Is, I, man, when we can bury the daggum Dodgers, oh. it's, it's a good moment in time. So if you're a Dodgers fan out there, we want to know why. <laughs> What your IQ is, and please give us a comment in the comment section, and you might receive a bird back. Hey. Okay, then, because I can't stand the Dodgers. It's funny. I, I grew up loving the Dodgers. All of us did. That's Dale, all we got to watch. Was it, Dale Murphy. Was he on the Dodgers? No, was it, no he, was he was Braves. Atlanta. He was Braves. Atlanta. But there was uh, Ryan Sandberg. Yep. Tommy Lasorda. Okay, so Those you've got big boys. S- Steve Sachs, Tommy Lasorda. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. Remember? We had, like, their pictures all oh, yeah. on my brother Chad's wall. Harvey. Um, well, and because in, we, I grew up in a little town in northeastern Arizona called Holbrook. If anybody's ever heard of that, but <clears throat> we played little. He survived league. Holbrook. I did. That should Holbrook. be your next song. <laughs> surviving. <laughs> Survive, surviving Holbrook. It was a great town. It was a, actually it was I I cried when I left. It was it was a great place to grow up, and I played little league there, and I was on the Dodgers. And okay. so, you know, you right. start to gravitate toward the team that you are in. Right, sure. And yeah, so. Well, we didn't have a team back then. 98 was when the D-backs were born. Yeah, yeah. So all we had on TV, which we didn't have cable either back when we were young, is you had, on the few stations we did have, we had the Dodgers. And so I can't hardly listen to games anymore and not feel like a literal, I miss Vin Scully. I miss that voice. Yeah. The Dodgers, Vince Allen, blah, 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 you know, Farmer John. Yeah. I mean, he was crazy good. And I, okay, so yes. And then you had Lasorda, but now they're just a sellout. So I love that our 40 million beat their 400 million. That's uh, all I have to say yeah. about this. That's awesome. That's insane. And it's just fantastic. So what do you think about the Phillies? Do you think we're going to be okay? I don't know if I, how I feel about that. I'm just <laughs> happy right now. Right. We've gotten a lot further than we thought we were going to get this year. I'm happy right now we just buried the Dodgers. And, frankly, we're hot, so I wouldn't want to play us right now. Yeah. Um, the the wild card teams typically are the those dark horses we talk about. And yeah. So you don't want to sleep on the guy that's in the back of the bus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. So – so now that we got back of the bus, you go check him out. He's got Apple Music out there, and we're going to throw some stuff out on our channel, um, especially the two new ones. So we're going to have to have an ode to Eddie on that one. Yeah. But I just, just like people to see what they are missing. So you drive to you drive the grocery store. You drive to the mini mart. You drive to your kids' Saturday morning baseball, basketball, volleyball, whatever's going on. You're picking one of your children up for more. Every, you're going to see Artie. You're going to see me. You're going to see. There are people out there that are making a big difference in life, and we don't feel like it. So, how often do you say to yourself, I was watching one of our podcasts this morning. Um, we just released it. It was uh, Andy Bowers. He's my cousin. And I, it just dawned on me that we don't see or we don't appreciate the brilliance in front of us. And I, and so once I started thinking that way, I'm like, I got to get Artie on here. I, it's like an example of we see 
really hard things here at our firm. Um, as criminal defense attorneys go, we, we get some pretty rough stuff and we handle it as well as we can. And we try to be there on their team and we try to make a negative into a positive. So right. we're, we're always trying to do what we're really trying to do is have them start following pathways that you walk, that your brother Chad walks, that your brother Brandon walks, that, that your neighbor Sally walks, that the pe- the majority of the folks around us are still rolling our role. I just wanted to put a flashlight on. Artie just so happens to be jamming with his guitar that shines. <laughs> Lights up. Lights up, light baby. Guitar. Lights up. It's the only <clears throat> time he ever lit up. Right? <laughs> yeah. Just don't hold it against us for the songs that we wrote when we were little. You know, it, there's there's a couple on there that I'm Couldn't any musician of. say that? <clears throat> I suppose. Couldn't any musician just, with any time under their belt say this? Like their it was lyrics? Just, I broke my femur at Lake Saguaro Lake when I was younger. I came home. I was on a lot of pain meds. Wrote something. And I wrote some songs during that time. <laughs> that you were, might not. They weren't have. nice. Right. They weren't nice. A little bit angry face? A little angry. A little weird. A little strange. Do you feel like your pain <clears throat> medication was like lace or I something? I think it might. It could have been. Yeah? It could have been. Because I wrote some weird stuff. Just mean. Mean. And your band went along with it. Yeah, you they said, went yeah. along with it. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Catchy tune. Catchy. Yeah. And, and now you're looking back on it going, oh, back on, I probably shouldn't have done that. Your little girl's saying, hey. I, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, had, Dad, I um, pulled this up. What does this mean? What does this mean? Hmm. Snap. Wow. Ask your mother. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> ask her either. <laughs> don't worry about it. That's my, my, my main about thing. It. I, I stopped saying go ask your mother. To, don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> it's like wisdoms. Wisdoms. <laughs> Wisdoms. Wisdom. So SRP, how well, you've been there for since '99. Yeah. And I like that point that you were making a minute ago with kids now having a couple of, of hustles. So mm-hmm. you work for two places. Obviously, airline is a you're oh. set. Yeah. And that well well sold. There. Quitting the airline was tough because then I realized I couldn't go anywhere any again for a long time. But you were like, yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. <laughs> to stay at SRP. I went through the customer service. I went over to their treasury department for a while, and then I found my way over to um, <clears throat> where I am now as consumer affairs and talking about s- seeing or hearing bad things. We kind of get the disputes that haven't been resolved, and we have to try to resolve those. And some of the things that we get can be heavy. Um, you know, you get people without power that haven't been in power for a really long time that are maybe connecting to their neighbor to get some sort of fan blowing in the summertime, um, but they can't afford it because of, you know, whatever reason, if they, construction reasons, sometimes you have to get a new panel in order to get power safely to your home. So that's a huge cost. And so we try to hook them up with, with organizations that can help them. But, but my people, they're faced with a lot of negativity and, and I'm faced with negativity in, in this job at times, but you have to be able to filter that out and find an outlet. And that's right. what I guess that's my main thing is you got to find an outlet. You got to find something that you love that you can do. Another thing that I do is Peloton. Okay, yeah. I, I ride the Peloton at least a couple times a week. There was a time where I was going every day. Um, that's why you look kind of, that's why you look oh, yeah, real sassy. Fit, let me tell you. You're looking no, good. I, I've got Are some you kidding work. me? We're I've on got the, some work. We're on the backside of 40, dude. <laughs> Look at us. I, I mean, got, we're going to be looking uh, back at this. We're on the flip side of 40. We're on the back side of 40. Yeah. I think we're doing pretty good. We're pretty sexy, I think. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, it doesn't so, matter what anybody else thinks. Yeah. But yeah, I, so I, I don't know. I enjoy that. I try to find time to do so that. So you, you, you stay active with the Peloton. You stay, you, you enjoy your music. And your kids are also uh, musical. Yeah. Some I'll of them I'll tell are. you what, my, my, my older two boys, and oh, my girls too. They're just picking it up. But my oldest son, he went off on a trajectory and um, bought himself a guitar. And that kid, he 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 studied John Mayer. Yeah. Okay. And John Mayer, I don't know if you ever seen him in concert, but that if you have a chance to see him in concert, it's you worth need, going. It, it's, okay. It's worth every penny and more. Okay. That guy's insane. But <clears throat> um, this I I went to him for the first time just a few months ago. And 
the guys playing guitar and piano at the same time. Think about that. He's playing guitar and piano. I'm trying to I'm trying with his like, feet. Dude, he is he is literally like doing like some harmonics thing on his guitar while he's like playing piano. It's insane. But he's probably the most He talented. probably also has two jobs. Probably. He's right. Several, it appears that several. he probably yeah, he, he can be He was doing a podcast for a while. Go check out his podcast. I'm going to have to. We're going to start creeping on him. It's funny, huh? <laughs> um, but no, he um he picked up he started listening to him and, and started playing along by ear. And my old my older son can play anything on the guitar. It's Just can hear it and play it. Yeah, he's it's insane. Because I've seen him on some of your social media stuff. I I think it was one one of your kids anyway. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, oh wow, they're yeah, good. My kids got hosed. <laughs> but it, it's it's fun though. It's fun to see that. Yeah, it is. Um, so boom, I love that. Get two hustles, and stay occupied, stay busy, stay yeah. moving, and. and you, and that hunger is what had kind of set you up for, okay, I'm liking this SRP thing. They're treating me really good, and I, I like to help people. I mean, SRP is kind of a big deal around here. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you know this. Yeah. Um, so even though we might, might want to love to hate them. People like air, to hate us. <laughs> right. Our air conditioning and the lights and the, uh, the grid thingy kind of is, yeah, kind yeah. of important. Yeah, especially here. Yeah, a you little know? bit. Yep. <laughs> if you don't have AC here, can you imagine? You wouldn't have ice in your big gulp. You keep trying to eddy that, don't you? Yeah, I'm eddy. <laughs> you eddy that, aren't you? I want to. So keep two side <coughs> hustles. Keep keep it going. Keep it going. I like that. So I, every little pod that we do, I like to bring out some something that you, somebody that, that the guest says because I'm trying to learn too. Um, I'm not going to go... I've been discouraged with the harmonica, been discouraged with the tambourine, so I don't know what I can do you now. You play guitar, though, don't you, a little no, bit? I don't know. No. I don't do a damn. I can... Piano? No, I'd sell my soul to play the piano. I'd like to. Someday I'm going to probably just sign up and just start in. Well, my son left to Seattle area, Tacoma, um, and came home. The kid sits down at the piano and is just playing stuff. This is Miles. Um my second son okay just starts playing just last night he was writing music i'm like dude keep going go keep for going it. right it's fun it's fun to see that is yeah. awesome we so there is beauty all around look for it we're living it you live it too and Artie whiting when you can look at him back of the bus Apple Music, I think you're also the, the back of the bus. The back of the bus. There's another. Yeah, there is the another band there. called Back of the Bus, oh, and they're not worth they're a trash. trap. But the back of the bus, because that's really a better name, the back of the bus, yeah. man. Where you at? Back of the bus. Yeah. The back of the bus. Yeah.